So we, we've got a few people that uh, are going to be speaking today, and I'm running for state representative for District 18. What does that What does that even mean? Um, okay, that means uh, I'll be representing the people of Grayson County and West Arden County at, uh, in Frankfort, and uh, so the different uh, issues that come up. Maybe it's a tax hike. Uh, maybe it's a, a bailout in the tens of millions of dollars to some corporation 80 miles away. You know, these, these things, this is not imaginary. These, these things happened just this year, and my opponent voted in favor of these things. But the funny thing is, uh, all the people that I walk around and talk to uh, in the district, just going throughout my day, going to work, and, and, and mingling with the public, and I, I say, you know, our representative uh, voted for uh, more more taxes and, and $35 million bailout. And I haven't come across anyone yet that was glad that she did that. So, um, you know, I, uh, I, I would definitely uh, do things a lot differently. I had an interview on K105 the other day, and that was one of their questions was, what would I have done differently? And that was that was an easy one to answer. And uh, I definitely don't want to see our people here. You know, take take a ride around. Folks are hurting right now uh, with all the shutdowns and, and business closures and all the restrictions and things. People are financially hurting right now, and even even uh, you know mentally, mentally hurting right now. You, know, you can't go here. You can't go there. The governor wants to keep us out of church. Uh, wants to tell us how to worship if you do go to church. So, uh, you know, you know, right now we would need we need some real strong representation that will stand up for the people and not just go along with some kind of party agenda. Whatever this party wants to do or that party wants to do, I honestly don't care what this party or that party wants to do. I care about what does the Constitution say and what does we the people say. And, right. and you know, the Constitution. Uh, it, it's actually a lot simpler than people want to make it. Our law has really gotten huge and complex, but uh, the, the Constitution is pretty basic and simple. It's like the Second Amendment. You look behind me here. Second Amendment plainly says, shall not be infringed. And uh, I know that's in the Second Amendment, but it, it applies to all the other amendments as well. You know, that First Amendment that, that says that, that uh, Congress can make no law respecting or prohibiting uh, different religious practices and, and even you know, press and assembly and all these different things uh, that shall not be infringed applies to that as well. And this year, you know, the governor cracked down on people and said, you know, you can't go to church. And uh, that's something that uh, just I, I can't I can't understand living in a place that the government is telling you you can't go gather together in a church and they call that a free country. You know, Amen. Uh, so uh, the, my question to people is like, when is it enough? You know, when is it enough? So when they when they're uh, censoring you, speaking out against the government, you know, is that enough for you? Or maybe when they're arresting people for speaking out against the government, or maybe when they're jailing people for many years or life when they're speaking out against the government. Or maybe when they're killing people, they're speaking out against the government. You know, what is it, what is your threshold? You know, when is it enough for you? And that's something it's going to be different for everybody. Everybody has different thresholds on lots of different issues. But uh, I've had enough this year. I've had enough of the, the mandates and uh, uh, different things, and, and they've been very specific. Uh, you know, especially as far as church folks go, we've noticed. You know, uh, I go all week long. I was going, I guess this was back in March or April. All week long, I could go to Walmart and I could buy Oreo cookies as much as I wanted to and, uh, and very little restrictions. But then the governor had come out and said that I couldn't go to church. This was Easter Sunday. The governor come out and said that I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to be allowed to go to church in person, uh, you know, in worship. And uh, that was disturbing to me 
Uh, you know, like I say, how much, if you give them that, then what's going to be next time? And what's it going to be next time? You know, uh, so we, we found a place to go to church. And then we got one of those notices on our uh, car that we should quarantine for 14 days from the Kentucky State Police. And we got some other people that will speak today. And they were there too. And, uh, but, you know, we, we have these, America is a special place. I said, I said it a lot of America is a special place. It's not like other places in the world where uh, government uh, reigns supreme. Uh, you know, folks think that. They think, well, law and order and all these things, and that's good and well. But we the people are the ones that are in charge. We the people, yeah. we the people reign supreme in this thing. And, and you, know, uh, you know, I'm just doing a, just an open talk here, but jury notification is a fine example of how we the people in America are supposed to be the, the supreme authority. If, right. uh, if there's if there's a law and it's unjust, and you go before a jury, uh, the jury has the right to, to judge the law and uh, and your guilt at, at the same time. So if that's an unjust law, they can judge you innocent, even though maybe on paper you really did violate that law. So for example. I went to church when I wasn't supposed to go to church, and they might drag me into court and say, you did this, and it was against the law. And the jury might sit there and look at it and say, yeah, here's the law, we see it, and he did violate it, you know, but America is a special place. It's not like other countries where they would say, okay, that's the law, rubber stamp, throw them in jail. In America, like I said, we the people are the supreme authority over, over what is right and wrong. And the jury in America, we can nullify these things and say, you know what, it's unconstitutional to try to convict someone to prison for going, to exercising their First Amendment protected right, going to church and assembling and, and exercising uh, their right to worship as they see fit. So that's why America is a special place. I'm, I'm proud to be an American, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid yeah. folks have forgotten what that means you know i i'm a i i really like going to church and things and 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 i say i'm a spiritual person and and folks talk about the american spirit and that word i don't use that word lightly spirit i don't use that word lightly some folks might you know but uh, there is an american spirit there is a a sense of this is a special place our rights are our rights you know, I have the right to go to church and worship a as I please. There's men, there's men, and their bones are buried in the ground. And they fought and died against tyranny so that we can have these rights. Yeah, my right. Huh? There's, there's, uh, there was at one time a government that people said we should obey the government and the laws. At one time, there was a government from overseas, uh, and they had come in, into this land and was telling people what they could and couldn't do. Now they wanted to come and confiscate people's guns. Uh, and the people of this land said, this is a special place. You know, and this is the place where we make our stand. Shall not be in friends. And that applies to all the all the amendments, applies to all my rights. And I'll even go a step further. If they decide, you know, things are going crazy with our with our country and our government. And if they decide to totally get rid of the Constitution, it could happen. Uh, if they decide to just totally lose their minds, get rid of the Constitution, totally throw it away. I'm telling you right now, my rights existed way before that piece of paper. My rights, my rights come from my Creator above. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it has nothing to do with the piece of paper. The piece of paper acknowledges the fact that my rights are inherent from my Creator. So, um, without any more of that, I've got I've got other folks that uh, invited to come and speak. And I'm glad they was able to make it out. Glad they was able to eat some barbecue with us. And we still have plenty left. If you're driving around and seeing this, 
and wondering if you could come and get something free to eat, you absolutely can. We've got way too much. Come and eat some of this. But, uh, but more than that, stick around and, and get full of freedom. Uh, hearing about hearing about some of this stuff today, we've got some interesting things uh, from from some folks who about their opponents uh, and things like that. But uh, my name is Jacob Clark, and I'd like to represent you and Franklin. So, uh, uh, who are we going to have up first? About Mr. Randall Daniel. Jacob kind of threw me on the spot. I wasn't expecting to come up here and speak. My name is Randall Daniel. I'm now the vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Kentucky. That's a whole state party, apparently. <laughs> I'm also a candidate running in House District 26. Uh, that's in Bulletin Carbon County, Kentucky. Uh, it's a split district where it's the northeasternmost part of Hardin and a pretty gerrymandered mess out of Bullet. Uh, snaking all the way throughout the whole county, but not really covering everybody's neighbor. Um, what got me involved in the Libertarian Party is a lot of eminent domain issues going on in Bullock County. A lot of people losing their property to our government, not getting fairly compensated for their homes, not getting fairly compensated for their farms, as corporate interests are being taken, you know, taken priority over farm families and military families that have moved to Bullock County to settle and make their retirements. And you would think that there would be a system in place for those families affected to have recourse. But when you have a single party, regardless of that party, and complete power for a county, like the case is in Bullet, then there is no recourse. It's cronies control that system. And so I got involved with the Libertarian Party to provide an alternative to those local residents. Those residents asked me to run, and here I am today. I apologize, I'm not wearing a you know, suit and tie, but I've never really been one for you know, self-aggrandizement. Uh, you know, I, I think you should come as you are. Amen. Um, if anybody has any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer some. I don't know if that's really the format Jacob Clark intended for this, or I could pass the mic on to the next person. Well, here are no questions. Robert Perry. <laughs> Am I going taller? Or taller? Oh, I don't. I don't care. Go on. All right, let's have James Toller up here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm James Toller. Uh, I'm actually running as for the state house of representative in the 78th district on the other side of the state. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't drive 150 miles to get here today to talk about my campaign. Uh, Jacob believes in a lot that I believe in. Uh, he's for uh, the rights of the people. Uh, the rights of the people has just been taken away so much over the last few years. And they're not taking a lot away at a time, but they're taking a little bit of time away, a little bit by little bit, by little bit, adds up to a lot. Uh, we need people in Frankfurt that's going to stand up for the people, for their rights, Amen. and get back what is rightfully ours. Yes. Uh, we're, we're totally 100% for gun rights, Amen. not gun laws. There's a difference. We need to take all the gun laws that there is in effect right now and yep. throw them out the front door of the Capitol in Frankfort, Kentucky, and we need to throw them into the river and let them swim away. With Jacob, Randall, myself, along with other candidates in, the, in Kentucky that's going to beat their opponents, beat the incumbents that's already in there to make Kentucky the most corrupt government in the country. And we're going to give the country, or the, we're going to give the state of Kentucky back to the people where it belongs. Amen. So I come out here today to throw my support at Jacob, and I fully endorse Jacob Clark for the Kentucky State House in District 7, or 18. So go out, vote for Jacob, and uh, let's get uh, some liberty back into the state, and let's take our state back. Amen. Amen. It's a good year for liberty in Kentucky. 
Amen. We, we got a lot of candidates this year for our party. We, we got uh, Joshua Gilpin out west. We got Amanda Billings running against the man who single-handedly stopped medical uh, cannabis. I don't know how you all feel about cannabis, but uh, the, the idea of somebody getting between a doctor and a patient and what serves the patient, yeah, I'm not real patient with that. So best of luck with Amanda. Uh, we, we have uh, Jacob, who you've seen. We have, we have Randall. We have, we have uh, James Toller. Uh, we have Mitch Rushing. Uh, of course, we have myself. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives for District 2, Kentucky. We got my good friend in District 6, uh, Frank Harris. We've got yeah, Brad man. Barron running for U.S. Senate. Yes, yeah, man. Against Mr. Tommy, yeah. it's Mitch Mitch. That is way overdue. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. we have Joe Jorgensen running for president. Uh, Jo2o.com. Um, so, who all got twelve hundred dollar checks this year? So, come on, a, a note so they can hear you. Who got twelve hundred dollar checks? Yay! Twelve hundred dollars. And that that was that was part of a bill, uh, an act that I think cost us three trillion. So e each of you now owe about nine thousand dollars. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> More interest. Yay! Are you feeling good about that twelve hundred dollars? <laughs> And you know this is this is what our federal government does. This is you know they, they take money from you, they take money from your neighbors, and they dole out bread and circuses. You know, look look at the money we, we just spent on the hospital. That was your money. That was your money. And what was it? Your money? It was your neighbor's money. Maybe not your next door neighbor. Maybe your neighbor in the state over. I mean, we're essentially stealing from each other and cheering for the people who are doing it. We have to stop this. Amen. We, we need to bring control of our money back to us. Not out of greed, but out of the fact that we know how to best spend it. Amen. We make sure our money gets spent on what we care for the most. So, that also comes into play with taking care of ourselves. Wow, you should see all the masks out in the audience. I, I see one, it's around the neck. Yeah, <laughs> this is not a mask wearing crowd. You know what? I'm actually kind of a fan of masks. I, I, I really actually am. Um, but it, it, it really only helps when people try to wear them correctly. It really only helps when people actually care about them. You can't force a person to wear a mask and it be effective. It, it has to be optional. Let me tell you something else, because I looked at I looked at the data. I'm, I'm kind of kind of a geek. Got into the data, dug into the data in March. Paying attention to the data, it was incredible the change in how fast the disease was spreading in this country. Not on the lockdowns. The change happened too fast for the lockdowns. The change happened when the information first went out when the administration first actually admitted that there was a problem. Just the way you behaved on your own. Just, and you might not have even known about it, but just the way you behaved, having the knowledge that danger was present, that's what made the biggest difference in the spread of this disease this year. And they ignore that. Instead, they want to pretend that it's their acts. Why? Because it gives them power. And that's how they keep sidestepping. One of the most important, important amendments, probably the most important in my mind, is actually the 10th. I love the second. I love the first. Exercise the first now. I love the fourth. Uh, I love them all. But the 10th is the one that says... You know, any, any powers that haven't already been mentioned and given to our federal government belongs to the state or the people. And they sidestep that all the time. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's not just what I'm about. That's what my entire party's about. I hope you vote libertarian this year. Uh, voting libertarian is basically a vote for having faith in yourself. That's, that's what this is. That's what we're doing. We're trying to move power back to you. We have faith in you. That's all I got for you today. Have a great day. Thanks for doing this. It's Rob Perry. He's running uh, for U.S. Congress, uh, U.S. Representative District 2 in Kentucky. 
And his opponent, Brett Guthrie, uh, last year, he put out a bill that uh, if, if somebody has uh, information that is contrary to vaccines, you know, anti-vax information or, or folks that, uh, you know, are against vaccines or just information in general that, that you know, would, uh, uh, yeah, here, I'll let Rob tell about it. But. Sorry, I got excited with all your freedoms and uh, forgot to mention the thing my opponent's doing. Uh, so yeah, this is the 2019 Vaccines Act. Uh, I believe it's HR 2862. Um, but essentially what it is, is it's uh, $75 million for the CDC to build a uh, surveillance infrastructure against people who are spreading information that isn't scientific or medically proven. Well, science was one of my first passions in life. And one of the key things about science is you start with hypothesis. So you literally start with an idea that is not yet scientifically proven. So I, I first of all consider uh, that bill to undermine science in and of itself. Uh, not that I'm a huge fan of conspiracies against vaccines and not that I'm cheering on every piece of information or information about vaccines out there on the internet. But you have to understand this speech is important because when you hear this weird anecdotal tale and then you hear another one and another one and another one well none of those were scientifically proven none of those are scientific evidence none of those are medical evidence that's anecdotal evidence that's what they're surveilling but when someone who studies vaccines hears enough of these anecdotes they get concerned and they do research so this information that isn't scientifically or medically proven is important and then they spend $30 million in approval, they haven't spent yet, but it's to approve $30 million in promoting vaccinations, not in making sure appropriate information is out there, but it actually says in the bill that it is to promote uh, use of vaccinations throughout the lifetime. We're, we're, you know, we're not talking about measles and polio. This is, this is about getting information out, telling you that it's important to take your flu vaccine. I took my flu vaccine last year. It's the first time I ever did it. I did it because I thought I was going to be on the campaign trail. This was before COVID happened. And I, I thought I might do some good, so I took it. I'm not having that vaccine. But think about it. This is $30 million campaign app with your tax dollars. This is $30 million that the federal government is spending to change your behavior. Its yeah. intent is to change your behavior. Its yeah. intent isn't to make sure you're well informed. Its intent is to change your behavior. Now, yeah. the really interesting thing is this isn't even out of the uh, Health and Human Services Committee. This, this is out of commerce. This is out of commerce because that's that's this committee that my op op opponent is in, and if you'll notice, uh, you know, four out of the five industries that are his top contributors are in healthcare or medicine. It's big pharma. Yeah. And and you know they they are just literally buying thirty million dollars worth of publicity with your tax dollars. And then they're buying another $75 million in suppression of speech. Okay. If you happen to have some evidence that isn't already scientifically proven against the product they're selling. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we, we, we need to stop letting stuff like this happen. happen. And it's, it's not just my opponent, it's not just me. This is another example of, we need decisions made by you, the people. We need you to be critical of the information that's coming out. We need transparency. If you think the vaccine's good for you, or you think the vaccine will help you or your neighbor or your children or your grandmother, take the vaccine. If you don't trust the vaccine, don't take the vaccine. And the people who are selling this you know, they, they know not every vaccine's good. They're, they're, not, they're not trying to tell you right, sell you right now on the vaccine from Russia. 
They don't trust it for some good reasons, but they also aren't going to sell it to you because it's not coming from one of their donors. <laughs> so anyway, that's any any questions on that? All right, cool. I'll give it back to you, Jacob. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Good job, thanks. Man. Yeah, so remember that uh, you know it's one thing to be uh, impartial, and and that's what government is supposed to be. And I kind of liken it to uh, journalism. You know, when they do the news, they're supposed to report the news impartial and let you decide what you think about it. And so, you know, as far as vaccines go, it should never be forced. And you should you should choose. It should be your choice. Yeah. And so, yeah. so, so for the government to launch a thirty million dollar campaign to persuade people to take vaccines, and just happens to be last year before all this mess, that's a that's a little that's a little weird. I think a little spooky. Uh -huh. So let's just remember that as Brett Guthrie. Put that bill out, and uh, we've got Rob Perry running against him uh, this time. So remember that. All right, uh, I got got another speaker here. Uh, his name is Johnny Embry, good friend of mine, a friend of God, and friend of Liberty. So come on up, Johnny. Thank you. Well, I, I told Jacob that I was talking to him and I said I'd be happy to come and just, uh, you know, say something on his behalf today. Now, currently I am a registered Republican, so I just want to say this. I'm a registered Republican who's here to stand with some really good libertarian candidates. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that I might not change my party affiliation, I just never got around to it. But what I want to say was as a registered Republican, I, uh, I'm a strong believer that we need to take our constitutional values seriously. I spent the last few years, a lot of people know me in and around the state of Kentucky, and I've always tried to get behind candidates who uh, support my value systems. Okay? And uh, as a Republican, when I first got into the Republican Party, there was people that I thought was uh, supporting our uh, constitutional rights. Uh, I believed the rhetoric that they were saying. And I got out here, helped them, and many of the candidates that I helped won back a few years ago. And then they invited me to come along with them. I've been to Washington, D.C. seven times uh, through some March of Lives, that type of thing. been to Frankfurt a lot. I, I, by the way, I actually am on the, the, uh, the committee for the uh, Marriage Family and Therapist Licensure Board. I'm also part of that right now as well. So I'm kind of involved in the governmental things, that type of thing. But I, the point I want to get at, I started realizing that we would get candidates that would, uh, one party, well, let's face it, we know it would be Republican jumping on Democrat, Democrat jumping on Republican, and they'd be arguing back and forth, and you would believe that a certain candidate was on your side, and then they would win, and then they would go to Washington, or they would go to Frankfurt, and, uh, and then you start taking the time to look down, and you look at the bills they're supporting they're putting forth, and all of a sudden, you start realizing they're not doing what they said they were going to do when they were running. They start, yeah, you know, and uh, you know, and I spoke, and I have to admit, I, why I was surprised, but uh, you know, you get gullible. And there's people listening to me that this is what they play on is is that you are ignorant of these type of things. I mean, you don't understand these things, and that's why I want to challenge anybody listening to this: start becoming informed. Read your bills. Look what's going on in Frankfurt. Look what's going on in Washington D.C. Look at what. Look at the closure votes. Uh, look at where the money. Follow the money, and you'll know. And look who the lobbyists that is supporting your candidate that you may be supporting. What happened? Now, with that said, I started realizing the the the, the candidates I've been supporting just were not supporting my value systems. So I decided it was time to start changing and looking for some candidates that actually supports my value system, okay? And uh, and that's why I wanted to come and speak for Jacob uh, Clark today. Jacob supports my 
value systems. I've talked to him. I'm a born again Christian. I'm also a minister of the gospel as well. First, I'm a strong believer in the Bible. And I'm a, an adamant supporter of the United States Constitution. Uh, but, folks, I'm going to tell you most people don't even realize that your American Constitution. Now, here, and, and uh, again, I'm not here to try to preach, I'm just simply making a statement about values. And most of the American values are based, most all, on godly values that are set forth in the Bible in most cases. But what I want to say is, is our American Constitution was written, the whole design is a biblical design if you follow it. I didn't know that until a few years ago. I actually started reading, studying, and realized much of the American Constitution is based off of biblical values. Now, and I'm speaking to the Christian people out there today, okay? That's why I'm not speaking to Christians. Christians, we need to stand up and realize that. Now, and I'm not degrading anybody that's not a Christian. Hey, even people who don't accept Christianity, your rights are still at stake. And we have a constitution. We have a paper that, if enforced, protects your rights. And how does your constitution get enforced? By people standing up for what it says and standing against people, politicians who are constantly trying to vote in and stand for and make up laws that degrade, tear down, or literally take away the right of that constitution. And it's happening all the time. Uh, folks, that's why we've got to start making that stand. That's what I love about the Libertarian Party because they're making that stand. They are a party who stands on the or the Constitution and it's uh, the law itself, especially the good laws anyway, you know, on it. And that's why we got to come back to that. So that's why I wanted to make that stand today and say, hey, I believe Jacob, I, I just don't see Jacob Clark as a guy who can be bought. I sit and talk to Robert Perry here and been him been talking and I, I really, uh, enjoy talking with him. He's running uh, uh, for that against uh, Brett Guthrie. And, I've, and when I've talked to Robert, I want to say I'm really strongly getting behind Robert here because I can tell that at least right now, and hope and pray, guys, I hope and pray you never change. Uh, but at least at this point in time, I really want to say, hey, I believe these guys, when they get there, when they get to, uh, if, if they don't win, we hope they win this time, and we need the people get behind them, but they're there to make the difference and I kind of feel like we've got some people here that's going to run, run again. <laughs> I really do. If they, if, if first you don't succeed, try, try again. If they don't win this round, they're going to run, run again. That's what we got to do. We got to stand there. So all I want to say is I want to get behind these candidates. Like Robert, I don't think Robert's going to go up there. Now I still think he's going to compromise his value. Okay. Uh, Brad Barry. Uh, I'm, I'm sadly behind Brad. Uh, I mean, I used to be a strong advocate, strong supporter of Senator McConnell. I just don't like his politics. I'm just out of school, leave it there. I just don't like his politics. And I, uh, um, Brad, I believe, is a man who's going to stand on our principles of the Constitution. As a Christian, I believe he's not going to compromise his faith. Um, uh, and he's someone who's willing, but he, but he wants to represent everybody. So uh, and I, what I want to say is, if you're a non-Christian and Christianity is not your thing, but you want somebody who is going to go and stand for your value systems and not compromise your constitutional rights, Brad is the man. Jacob, he's the man. Robert, these other guys here, Randall Daniel, and then your, what's, what's brother's name? James. James, James Warner, is that right? Toller, Toller. Toller, Toller, James Toller. So James Toller, these guys, and there's what, 22? Did y'all say 22 candidates? So be sure to check out the 22 candidates. And I don't want to take too much time here, because, um, but uh, all I want to say is I want to challenge people. Please go out and consider this. I, as I close out today, I want to tell you something, and I want to say something for a strong friend of mine who I have watched, and, and this is why I want to challenge people to check out your Libertarian candidates, okay? But I want to talk about a friend of mine who uh, uh, has been knocked down more than one time and got up, and right now not doing too bad, and that's the sister uh, Ada Southworth. 
I watched Adrian Southworth. There's many people who know Adrian Southworth. She run, uh, she was an orator, uh, orator, orator, whatever you call them, of the Take Back Kentucky for a long time. Uh, the guy who created the Take Back Kentucky actually is from Grayson County here. And um, in uh, anyway, that's that's a whole other story. But some of the Take Back uh, Kentucky people uh, are friends of mine. But anyway, but Adrian Stewart, she's strong constitutional value person. Yeah. She has always stood. She stood with the Ron Paul groups and she's always stood with liberty. Uh, she's been a strong supporter of libertarian type of movements. And she's always, she's always stood on that. Now, uh, she was also worked for our lieutenant governor. Uh, things come against her. She had people come against her hard. Her name was drugged through the mud because she made a stand for our former, former lieutenant governor. Uh, they, people has tried to tear her down. People has tried to really make her look bad. But you know what? She stood. She's running for Senate seat seven in the state of Kentucky right now. Uh, she uh, she was in a primary that was very dirty. <laughs> she won it, and she may very well end up winning that Senate seat. All I'm simply trying to say, and I'm not trying to make a pitch for her. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make a point. She never gave up. She kept on trying when people came against her. That's what I wanted to get at. And that's what I want to say about the candidates here, guys. Stay with it, Jacob. Stay with it. You know, get out there. Stay on the mark. You know, if first you don't succeed, try, try again. So I appreciate you letting me come and speak today. All right. Thank you so much. So, uh, the next one we got is my brother James Clark. And uh, James is a veteran. And uh, uh, not just my brother, he's my friend. We, we all grew up real close. Seems like the people you you uh, wrestle with the most, you end up closest with when you get there. And, so. and I always won, but anyway, here's my brother. James. <laughs> He always won so far. <laughs> right now, whether we like it or not, there exists a class of people who believe they rule over us. We were born into this system, so it doesn't matter if we consent to it or not. This is the way we live. They steal our money before we get it through income tax. And they use this money, they have used this money to fund things like Planned Parenthood, the war on drugs, the war on terror, and God only knows what else. Years ago, tyrants, like my brother said, came over here, tried to have their way with us. There were those who stood against them. We are, they are the reason we are here today. And like he said, we will stand again. This is our last stand. The Libertarian Party is our last stand. For people like me, yeah, for people who don't want to vote, there are many people who don't want to vote because they don't want to participate in this mess. They don't want to be responsible for it. They want to just ignore it. They don't want to consent to all these endless wars and all the poverty and the strife that our government puts on the whole world. This is the land of the free. So for the people who don't want to participate in that, the Libertarian Party is the last stand to do this thing peacefully. We will stand again. Right, thank you. So I just wanted to go over a few things and wrap it up here. Um, and if anybody is asking questions on some of these Facebook lives, y'all please relay that to me. But I uh, just want to go over a few things. So in, in our district, we have a, a little baby named Colby. Colby is, I believe, about three years old, little girl. And um, uh, Colby was born with a uh, condition where she has seizures every day and sometimes lots of seizures during the day. Now, I've got a son and he had seizures 
just for a little while, just just for a day or so. One time, he had something wrong with him temporarily and had seizures, and, and it was it was very scary. It was a nightmare, and uh, you know he stopped breathing. It could be brain damage if it goes on so long, and it's really scary. You imagine, just imagine now, that's your baby girl, and this is the condition she has. But there is a, a medical cannabis has been proven to uh, eliminate 99% of those seizures. Now there are other things out there and they cause uh, different other conditions and they have long term side effects and, and cause all kinds of damage. And to be honest with you, it's just a turn off that they're not natural. Uh, so uh, we have we have medical cannabis that we could, we could have in Kentucky. We almost got it passed last year uh, HB 136 and you know uh, I call myself pro-life and and that means that for, first of all that means that I, I don't I want to see an end to the the demand for abortion I want to see an end come to that but it also goes a step further than that you know when you got a child like that that's, that's laying there and in that condition day in and day out if you call yourself pro-life but you wouldn't you wouldn't support that mother's ability to grow something naturally to make her child better. Then there, there's something wrong there. There's a serious conflict. But uh, I, I truly believe that folks should be able to take something that they can grow naturally and make themselves better. And it, just, it just makes sense. I want to do something before we get out there. Okay, we'll get Mr. Henry back up here again in a minute. So that's my stance on cannabis. Uh, you know, I, I definitely want to try to see us get some uh, medical cannabis pushed through. Every time a new drug comes out, you see you see commercials after commercials, and it takes them 30 seconds to get through the disclaimer of all the different side effects. And, and it can, you know, it, it'll help your it'll help your uh, uh, PTSD, but uh, you know, it may cause heart failure and, and death and all these things. So. Suicide. Suicide, yeah. So uh, anyway, I, I, would, I definitely would rather go with uh, uh, natural cures. So that's my stance. That's my stance on that. Uh, I said I'm pro life plus. I, I, I definitely would like to see an end to the demand uh, for abortions. And if we was to get, if, if if we could ban abortions tomorrow, okay, that's great. But that doesn't stop them. That's just a fact. It doesn't stop them. It doesn't take care of all the kids that are in foster care, we can take care of all these other things. So there's a lot more to that than just, you know, uh, ending the abortions. And, and I think when we're pro-life, we need to look at a lot of issues through those pro-life views, you know. Uh, so there's that and taxes and spending, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are taxed enough. There's plenty of money and I'll, I'll, I'll argue this with anybody. I don't care what committee you sat on or whatever. There is plenty of money taken from the people to run government efficiently. There's actually way more money taken from the people to run government efficiently. What, what is killing it is spending it on bailing out corporations, spending it on funding, uh, war, uh, not wars. That sounds like it's something that's commendable. You know we're we are uh, we're like the the goons for the loan shark in many places in the world where we guard a bunch of assets you know for somebody else a bunch of contract deals uh, you know pushing some kind of propaganda some kind of agenda in other places and if you don't believe me find a veteran and talk to them there are several veterans that come home and and war was not what they thought it was going to be. War was not the, the glorious fight for freedom and delivering freedom all over the world that they thought it was going to be. So I think a lot all that goes goes into taxes and wasteful spending. And I definitely would vote against new taxes, definitely vote against wasteful spending. And I, I definitely want to see an end to the wars. Uh, other issues that are, are relevant now is school choice. And uh, I might lose... I might lose a lot of votes on this one, but Johnny said some things there, and, and it's just it's the right thing to do, you know. And that's where that's where I'm at. There's there's a right and wrong, 
But you know, we pay fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars. Taxpayers pay fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars per student per kid uh, to give that student an education. Okay. Now, if if their school is shut down, or if maybe they don't agree with their school, something like that, then uh, then that money it, it just go it just goes to the school. The, the money is for the, ends up being for the school instead of the child. So. For all these people that would rather have their kid in a, in a private school, a charter school, or rather homeschool them, or there's even there's even schools that are specific to interests like uh, you know musical schools or, or schools based around arts or schools based around apprenticeships, you know, and, and skilled jobs and things like that. So I think the parent is there with the child. They're they're there, and they should be able to make the decisions better for their child than bureaucrats 2,000 miles away. Yeah. And, and that brings me to another point. That brings me to another point. We've got you know, a lot of things we do. We, we pay these taxes, they go up to the state. Sometimes they go out to DC, they go in a big pot, and then people thousands of miles away, bureaucrats decide what is best for us here in Grayson County. And that's just ridiculous. I, I'm for, bringing things back down to the local government level, it's a lot more manageable. You know, if you need to protest against this spending and you go to your local government, you know, you can you can have an influence on them, but instead now they say, well, it's out of our hands. You know, Frankfurt does it, DC does it, uh, things like that. Uh, and then also uh, I support getting rid of bad politicians. So, you know, we have... We have some that rise up and, and become tyrants, and uh, you know we have a, we have a balanced uh, three branches of government. You know we have our legislative branch, judicial branch, and our executive branch, and that those are checks and balances. It's supposed to keep uh, things uh, balanced out so that one person isn't ruling. That that's what it's all about: is separating those powers out. And uh, Savannah Maddox has a bill out now, or, or it's going to be a bill. It's a it's a bill request right now for. Uh, BR 130, and that is to get that separation of power in Kentucky back into place. And we have a governor that's basically ruled as a dictator uh, all this time and has totally disregarded the General Assembly or legislators, totally re uh, disregarded uh, uh, the judges' orders and things like that. So, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to put that back in place. But I think we need to go a step further. You know, uh, Bashir has already been outspoken about uh, uh, not not cooperating with BR 130 and how he thought it was uh, uncalled for and this is not the time and all these things. So uh, I think it's a good bill to put in place for future uh, governors and, and uh, officials in general. But I actually believe that we need to impeach Bashir. And um, I've made a promise. I made, I made a promise that on day one that I would uh, initiate the impeachment of Governor Bashir. And I want to emphasize this is not a Republican thing, Democrat, Libertarian. This is not that thing. This is uh, freedom of we the people, balance of our, of our three branches of government, uh, separation of powers. You know, that's what this is about. And I don't care if it was a Republican governor or a Libertarian governor. I don't care what they were, it, you know, if they go against this and oppress the people in such a manner, then they need to be removed from office. And so I promise to uh, initiate that. So uh, I think I think that, that pretty much covers... HB 99. HB 99. Okay, yeah. So my, my opponent voted for HB 99. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll say, I, I need to probably start doing that. My opponent is Samara Hebron. And she voted for HB 99, which is a, a $35 million bailout to U of L, and uh, that uh, that is so that they can buy a hospital now. Uh, so that they they want to raise our tax. She voted for more taxes too, and the, the justification for that is always, well, we need more roads, we need this, we need infrastructure, this, that, and the other. But then, like Johnny's saying. They speak out of two, both sides of the mouth. They, they say, this is what we need this taxes for, right? But then when you look at the bills, Johnny said it right. Look, look at the bills. Look at the votes. Look at what they're doing.
So she, you know, she got more taxes uh, coming, and what are they going to spend it on? They're bailing out U of L, thirty-five million dollars that they don't have to pay back. And uh, you know, when you when you get something like that given to you, and you and now they've got this hospital, you know, if you run it, if you, if you run it into the ground, it's no big deal. You probably get bailed out again, you know. But but private private sector solutions, you know, if somebody bought that. Uh, if a millionaire bought U of L and they had to run it and make a profit and keep it in business, you know, it, it's going to be better quality. You know, yeah. they're going to do a good job. They want return customers, things like that. And so they really, they, I would say that by them doing that, they have probably lowered the, uh, the, the level of service that you, oh, you're going to get at U of L uh, at that hospital, Jewish hospital is what they bought out. Amen. So they probably actually have delivered. Uh, less uh, quality health care in that area by bailing them out. But uh, anyway, uh, any any questions or any comments or anything, anything online, anything like that? Anybody else want to speak? Anything else to say? So she built out a U of L hospital and supposed to represent Grayson County. How does that help Grayson County? Yeah, so a, a representative of District 18, you would think, would be representing District 18, right? Yeah. And you would think that the, the things that she would speak for would be located in District 18, but I'm going to estimate that that this money went, the place it went was about 80 miles away from here. And I don't know, there might be some employees of that place uh, in this in, in this city. Um, well, what I want to say was, you might want to bring up, is Twin Lakes, our hospital here was just took over by Owensboro Hospital up there because they basically went bankrupt. I don't know, know if you knew that or not. Yeah, most people don't know. Owensboro Hospital has just basically took over Twin Lakes because they couldn't make ends meet, so she didn't even help her own hospital out. So Twin Lakes went under recently, but we bailed out U of L so they could buy Jewish Hospital. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm, that's what I'm here. I want to, I want to represent these people that I've grown up with, that I went to church with, that I've worked with, you know, and I want to represent these people in Frankfurt and, and stand up for our rights, you know, and stand up against heavy taxation uh, and, and wasteful spending of our taxes. You know, I want, to, I want to stand up for the people in this community that are my neighbors, my friends, a lot of us, my family, and, and, and represent them. Uh, in Frankfurt, so that's that's my mission is to make government simple, cheap, and honest. Okay, recall votes. She says, I think what she's talking about is uh, so this year, of course, you know, we got our governor uh, that's that's uh, become a tyrant. We we had a uh, a sheriff in Breck County, Mr. Johnny Hibbert, over this. That uh, you know had, had uh, several things. I, I'd rather not go smear it or anything. But anyway, had a sheriff in Breckenridge County that needed to be removed. Um, you know, and we don't have a recall process. Uh, Mayor and Fish, uh, Mayor Fisher in Louisville. You know, somebody want to get him out. We don't have a recall process. If your if your politician turns out bad, you just deal with it. That's basically what we got going. So I, I would I would want to put a recall process in place, something that where if 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 we want to recall a sheriff, a mayor, governor, something like that, that if we get the votes uh, in the GA, that that, that can happen, and uh, you know that we can get that sheriff out, get a good sheriff in. The sheriff's an important position to your community, so uh, I think that's very important. And moving forward, I think that's that's going to be part of holding our government accountable. Anything else? All right. Uh, I think Johnny uh, Henry had, had a little something okay. else to no, do. No, 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 stay right there. Okay. All I wanted to do, uh, all I wanted to do was this, this This is a fundraising event as well, even though it is meet the candidates. So what I want to do is I kind of want to put a challenge out there. And I didn't have a lot of money. But I got a $50 donation here that, uh, that I've got checking. I want to present that to his campaign. It's a fifty dollars donation, and I want to challenge anybody that can out there. Believe me, 
I know we ain't got to bring to give, okay? God's been blessing me a lot lately. If you can't find, if you got five dollars that you can, uh, uh, you know, help him out with, and people here all on the Facebook up there. I mean, five dollars. I mean, that does at least that does send a few things in the mail or something. So anything you can do, help him out. I'd like to challenge you though, if you can give fifty dollars, hundred dollars, or something to his campaign. And I know this is something a lot of times people don't like to bring up, but folks, here's a reality: campaigns cost money. They are not run cheaply, and and you just have to do the best you can. Now, I know his heart is not for money. But he needs it for his campaign. So I want to challenge ben, Robert Perry's campaign and Brad Barrett's campaign. Of course, today this one's particularly his. So, but still, give to the uh, Randalls, his campaign, and the other brothers. But anyway, please give if you can. So I want to challenge people to give whatever you can. All right, we appreciate that. So, uh, our website is www.clark. Number four, ky.com. And uh, let's see, James Toller, uh, I guess you would have to come up and tell where they can donate to you. Uh, Rob Perry, what? Uh, Perry? Perry for Kentucky. Perry for KY. Either way. Okay, uh, his is Perry, P E R R Y, number four, ky.com. And uh, so, you know, we appreciate any, any little you can do. Uh, I've had some donations recently that's really helped out, and uh, it's, it's it's got me uh, got me going. So uh, you know, please do what you can there. It's a it's an investment. You know, that's the way to look at it. Uh, you can donate to these other ones, and they're just going to take more from you when they get in office. But donate to me. It's an investment in making your government cheaper and and honest. And uh, an investment is something you get a return on. So uh, if you can if you can donate uh, today, that'd be great. Uh, anything else? And thank you, Johnny, for that donation. All right. Well, if nothing else, then uh, we thank everybody for coming out today. We're going to wrap this thing up, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.